Good morning, my name is Andy Fox and uh, today I'm going to show you a routine of um, how to clean the nozzle plate and back flush uh, and, and flush out any debris that might be in the drop generator um, in the print head. Um, so if we look at the print head, um, you can see the drop generator is right here. It has the two tubes coming into it and on the front of the drop generator is the nozzle plate. Uh, it could be either a, a 40 micron, 65 micron, or 75 micron. Um, it has the two little Phillips screws, very tiny screws at the front end. So um, what you will see, what you will notice is that the jet, uh, when we are um, looking at the jet stream coming down the system, it should be going into the uh, return gutter at the bottom and being vacuumed back into the system. What you will see if there's debris um, in the drop generator, what you'll see is that stream will be wandering. Um, now you can try fixing it with some back flushes and there's a previous video that I've done on how to do a back flush. I would try five or six of those back flushes and that's purely getting your, your cleaner, uh, your cleaning and literally aiming it up uh, into the nozzle at the same time as hitting the back flush button and squeezing it and you'll see the the cleaner coming up into the tubes here um, that gets rid of any um, debris that's collected in the back of the nozzle uh, sometimes it's it's a little bit more than that and that won't get rid of it so if you've done a five or six of those and you're still seeing the jet wandering you're starting it and the jet's missing the hole altogether um, and then you do it again, it's in a totally different place. That's what we call jet wandering. And, and we, can, we can fix that by flushing out the uh, drop generator at the top here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today, okay? So the tools you're gonna need are a, a small Phillips screwdriver that fits the two tiny uh, Phillips screw heads uh, for, the, for the nozzle plate. Uh, your cleaner, uh, the, same, the, the right, um, uh, solvent base is what you're using in the printer. So if it's an MEK, you need an MEK solvent. Um, you need either a replacement nozzle plate, because it could be a damaged nozzle plate that could be the issue. Um, but you definitely need, for the process, you definitely need a replacement O-ring, um, the, the little rubber seal that goes at the back of this. Uh, the rubber seal, so here, here's the rubber seal. It's basically, you can get a pack of... Uh, 10 of these, part number 21001-08. And uh, there are a little uh, boot, little rubber seal that goes in the back of the nozzle plate. Um, and then obviously a beaker to collect when we're flushing through a beaker to collect all the, uh, the waste ink, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously move the print head so that it's onto a flat surface. These screws are very, very small and um, it is very easy to lose them, drop them. Um, first thing, you need a, a small Phillips screwdriver, um, the right size for these two screws at the front of the nozzle uh, of, of the drop generator. Um, the other thing is make sure the printer has been turned off for a while. Um, it is possible if you've just turned it off, there is still a bit of pressure uh, it, behind the nozzle plate here. So I'm gonna go ahead and on this flat surface so that we don't lose the screws. I'm going to release the two screws. Right there, there's one. And then the other one. And you might get a little bit of um, seepage um, from, from the uh, nozzle plate. Um, then I'm gonna get a, a, a small flat bladed screwdriver just to ease this nozzle plate off. Take this other screw out here. Now you see why we're doing it on a workbench. So this is the, the nozzle plate is off and uh, it is sided. And if you look at the, the one side there, you can see um, inscribed on it what the nozzle size is. And then um, it's, let me just get this screw out here a second. There we go. So now at the back end of where the nozzle was, 
um, there is a small, um, like an O-ring uh, boot that goes over. So I'm going to carefully pry this off. There we go, that's off. Okay, so there, there's the um, there's the little boot that comes off of that. Put that to one side. So now that now the print head is open, and the, the, we've took the two screws out, the nozzle plate out, and uh, the little rubber O-ring that's uh, behind that nozzle uh, nozzle plate. So so the next step we're going to flush that through so we've got the nozzle plate off the two screws the rubber o-ring or the seal behind the nozzle plate um everything's um, off there so we're going to start the printer up wait for that to boot up so now the printer's booted up um, we're going to go into the service screen and then into fluidic and at the top here, you can see that it's got uh, the run pump target 40 actual uh, PSI and actual RPS. Next to it, you've got the up and down arrows. What we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit of pressure. So around about six PSI, seven PSI. Um, so we're gonna hit the up arrow a few times. So first thing we're gonna do is move the print head, we're going to hold this over a beaker because we need to collect the ink that comes in uh, out of it. And we're going to hit the up arrow five or six times. And it takes a while for this to read, but in a little bit, you'll start seeing the RPS. There you go, it's going up now, actual two RPS. I'm going to keep on hitting it up. Four RPS, four PSI, a little bit more. Again, we need to get to around about six or seven PSI. There's seven PSI, all right? And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up the print head valve. And you see there's ink coming out of the nozzle uh, where the nozzle plate was. So it's gonna make a mess. Now I'm just gonna increase this up a little bit. So it comes out a little bit harder. Take it to around about 20 PSI. And then leave that running for a little bit. You can see it dripping out the bottom. We can then go ahead and hit the stop button. And just let the pressure uh, deplete in the print head. Okay, okay. Now, now that it's stopped um, and the pressure's gone, we can get our cleaner and we can just wash down the print head, starting from the top, around where the little O-ring goes or the seal, all the way down. Charge electrode, phase detector, the two um, uh, deflection plates and then all the way around to the, the bottom face plate and the return gutter. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Okay, put that to one side. Let the print head dry. And then the process is gonna be the reversal. What we need to do now is put a new O-ring or a rubber seal onto the uh, dro uh, drop generator and it's like a little cap that fits in and then once that's on we can then place the the nozzle plate on there tighten the two screws up and then see whether the jet is still aligned if it's not we need to do a jet alignment so the next procedure is to replace the um, rubber seal so i'm going to take one of these new rubber seals and again this is the part number so I'm going to take one of these out. I 
and there is a specific way that this goes on. Um, there is, it's like a boot that sits on a spigot inside the nozzle plate, uh, inside the uh, drop generator rather. So I'm going to very carefully put this on. This is fiddly. There we go. So we've got the little rubber boot on. That's sat nicely. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, nozzle plate. And again, the nozzle plate goes only one way. Okay. And if you look, there's, uh, if you look at the nozzle plate on this one corner, there's a chamfer on it. And then if you look at the actual drop generator, the bottom left there, there's also a chamfer on it that matches up. So it only goes on one way. Drop that down. We're going to get a screw. And put that in there. With the Phillips screwdriver. Be very, very careful not to uh, cross thread these. Very easy to cross thread them especially because you're coming in at an angle. So feel it for the first little bit and get the second screw. Put that in. And then again, don't over tighten it. Don't strip the heads, but just tighten it down onto that um, onto that uh, seal okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to start the jet back up and um, make sure the alignments in so a little trick here um, if you want to make sure the alignment is in um, obviously if, it, if the alignments out and you're using ink to do the alignment you're going to get um, a, a lot of uh, spray everywhere it's going to get dirty so one of the things that i do just to get it in the ballpark is i actually go into the clean and print head clean hit that button i'll just put a beaker under it and then what i'm looking for is to make sure that when i clean and nothing's going to happen until around about 35 40 percent but then the cleaner will come through and um it will hit the, uh, the, the return gutter, hopefully in the right place and get vacuum back or be close. One thing you're checking for when you're doing this is that um, this runs at around about 20 PSI. So it's about half the pressure of the jet stream. So one of the things you can do is check, make sure that the there's no leaks around the nozzle uh, to make sure that seal has made a good seal again and gone back in the right place. So we're getting 32% now, so we're getting close. warning saying my ink is low so you see now that the alignment is out and it's coming out to one side to the left side so if that had been ink it would have made a bit of a mess so now I can go in and do the alignment and get it back into the hole okay so I'm going to do another clean and I've undone the I've released the uh, locking screw so I'm going to use the, the adjusting screw now to adjust the alignment from left to right. So as soon as that 40% comes up, I will see the stream. Seven percent, thirty-two percent. So it should start any moment now. And I need to move the jet to the right, so I'm going to turn the screw um, counterclockwise. Okay, so. Got it 
from left to right. Now I'm going to adjust it up and down and get it into the into the um, the hole there. So we're close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust it um, up and down. So I'm going to release the 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 locking screw, which is actually needs this screwdriver. I'm going to release the uh, this screw just a fraction and start the print head clean again and it needs to go to the back so I'm going to lift the back end up of the drop generator again when it gets to 40%. So this process with the cleaner, we're just getting it close. Um, you know, so that it's in the hole and stays in the hole, in the gutter, return gutter hole. Uh, once we've got it into the hole, then we can start the jet up and fine tune the uh, the alignment then. So there's the jet and we're going to lift it a little. There we go. And you can hear the vacuum now working very well. So I'm going to lock this one off now. Okay. So now once we've done that and we've gotten getting good vacuum, all the, the streams going up into the vacuum, uh, into the uh, return gutter. So now what I can do is I can go to the main screen and hit start jet and everything should be close enough to be able to just fine tune that uh, the alignment. So we're going to hit the back button from the main screen. We can go ahead and hit start just in case offer a ink low again, offer a beaker underneath just in case it moves out and we still haven't fixed the problem of the debris in the back of the nozzle plate. Should be jet starting anytime soon. And the alignment's slightly out. We're getting a lot of overspray there, but uh, we're not getting the wandering anymore, which is good. And 
don't forget just to lock these screws up afterwards and we're ready to go we've now got a jet stream that is straight it's not wandering and uh, we're ready to print <laughs>